Hi guys, it's Strawberry. Did you miss me? Within the past few weeks, a new Strawberry Shortcake reboot has appeared out of thin air, and we thought, who would we be not to discuss it? You know, there's a lot to unpack here, so be sure to grab a snack and get comfortable. Before we dive into things though, we need to discuss what in the world happened since Strawberry's failed reboot in 2017. But first, a brief synopsis in case you're new here. Strawberry Shortcake started out as a greeting card character in the 1970s, and she has gone on to become a beloved icon for over 40 years, producing TV specials, toy lines, apparel, and more. The character has undergone many drastic makeovers throughout the decades, so each generation has a different set of memories and preferences regarding her appearance. Miranda, the owner of this channel, grew up loving Strawberry Shortcake and began uploading stop-motion animations featuring the franchise's toy line in 2010. What started as a hobby has since blossomed into a community of fans and content creators, better known as SSCTube. In 2015, American Greetings sold the Strawberry Shortcake franchise to Iconics for $105 million. A year later, in May 2016, word got out that Iconics had partnered with DHX Media to co-produce 39 episodes of a new Strawberry Shortcake series. Another year later, however, Iconics sold 100% of the franchise, along with 80% of the Peanuts franchise, to DHX Media for $345 million. Iconics owned the fruit-themed brand for only two years before ultimately giving it up. And it did so because it started crumbling under excruciating debt. This article on Fashion Network's website confirms that Iconics sold the Strawberry and Peanuts brands in order to reduce its debt by $362 million. That wouldn't be enough to save the company, however, and it would meet its downfall in 2021. According to this article on RetailDive.com, the company has experienced drastic revenue losses and has been sold to a private equity firm named Lancer Capital, which will assume the burden of its debt. I think we can safely assume that the series announced in 2016 was the failed 2017 reboot. On May 10th, 2017, DHX Media completed its acquisition of the Strawberry Shortcake brand, and to celebrate, it released the first photos, as well as a brief sneak peek, of its new series. Fans became livid, stating that the new character designs were hideous, unoriginal, and looked like hybrids of the Sugar Rush crew from Wreck-It Ralph, and Smurfs. We were the first to post a video about the reboot to express our discontent. We threw it together in a couple of hours, thinking it wouldn't reach many people since we have a very small audience, but the video spread like wildfire and fans became even more upset with the company. At present, said a video is approaching 100,000 views and has remained the most popular upload on our channel for the past four years. Whenever we check our comments, 99% of them are, unsurprisingly, for that video. In hindsight, we would have rethought our approach and addressed the reboot differently. This experience proves that no matter how insignificant you think you are, your voice can still have an impact, so use it wisely. Also, it proves that the videos you put the least effort into get the most attention. Fans slammed DHX Media so much that it removed all images of the series from its website, as well as the brief sneak peek it posted to its YouTube channel. We included a screenshot from the sneak peek in our video, but we hadn't thought to download the clip because we didn't expect DHX to delete it a day or two later. Also, we had taken screenshots of DHX's website before it scrubbed it of all traces of the reboot, but when we searched for the pictures to include in this video, we realized that they might be in our hard drive that conveniently went into failure just a week before the 2021 reboot announcement. <sighs> and that's why you should always back up your files. You'd think that the internet would quiet down after the promo shots were removed, right? Nope. Fans roast the 2017 reboot to this day. The complaints would go on to reach virality on TikTok and Twitter, which further fueled the fire. But 2003 is the GOAT. And can we talk about how unseasoned 2017 Strawberry looked? Like, that's low-key a downgrade. High-key though, high-key Strawberry from 2009. She has the best fit. Since then, DHX Media has rebranded as Wild Brain. Could this have been due to all of the negativity? 
Maybe, but I don't have sufficient evidence to prove so. Wild Brain quietly shoved the 2017 reboot under the rug, never to mention it again apart from showcasing it in occasional infographics. The only surviving clip from the 2017 series is this two-second one in their timeline video. After the fact, the company dropped vague hints about a new Strawberry Shortcake series being in the works in a couple of articles, but it provided no details about the project whatsoever. Fans became confused as to whether the 2017 iteration would still go on, or if it had been scrapped altogether. Fast forward to September 22nd, 2017. We posted the first episode of our short-form web series, Life's a Shortcake, to this YouTube channel. To provide a brief synopsis, Strawberry receives an invitation to attend culinary school in the Bitty Apple, which is our rendition of Big Apple City, and she leaves Berry Bitty City behind as it hinders the advancement of her culinary career. By the third episode, we showcase her and Custard packing their bags and moving to the city, as well as them being wowed by all the sights. Why is this information relevant? You're about to find out. In 2020, there was still no word about a new Strawberry Shortcake series apart from the very vague hints. I almost forgot to mention that Wild Brain did produce a 2D web series in 2018 based on the 2016 Berry Bitty Adventures era comic books, but it wasn't a full-scale or long-lasting production. We have become inclined to believe that Wild Brain would return the character to her original 1980s design due to her social media switching back to the vintage aesthetic. In June of 2021, we spied that the official Strawberry Shortcake website was under construction, so we should have suspected then that a new series was right around the corner. On September 9th, 2021, Wild Brain announced a new short-form Strawberry Shortcake web series that was set to debut on September 18th entitled, Berry in the Big City. The premise? Strawberry develops a goal to become the best baker in the world, and according to her, big dreams need big places to come true, which is why she leaves her adorably tiny hometown of Berryville and comes to Big Apple City. Then the trailer proceeds to showcase Strawberry and Custard traveling to Big Apple City to pursue her culinary dreams. That sounds a bit similar to our concept, doesn't it? Even the premiere dates are similar. To make things clear, we are not attacking Wild Brain or any of its employees or affiliates, and we do not want or expect anyone else to attack them. We're just inclined to believe that the company may have seen our series and taken inspiration from it for theirs, which I think adds an interesting piece to the puzzle regarding this deep dive. If you disagree with our observation, you're entitled to your opinion, but bear in mind that the official Strawberry Shortcake YouTube channel has been subscribed to our channel for seven years and still is subscribed to our channel at the time of this video. That confirms that the company is aware of our content. I want to clarify, too, that we are also aware that Strawberry has visited Big Apple City before in the past. Once in the 1980s Strawberry Shortcake and Big Apple City special, and again in the 2016 comics, which pay homage to the aforementioned special. We used these two sources for inspiration for Life's a Shortcake, but here's the difference. In the special and the comics, Strawberry visits Big Apple City for a baking contest, only to return home after the fact. In Life's a Shortcake, which is our series, we decided to have Strawberry move to the city to advance her baking career when business at her cafe becomes slow. Keep in mind that the original 2017 reboot was supposed to take place in Berry Bitty City again, or at least in some variation of Berry Bitty City, and Strawberry was supposed to have magical powers, judging by the promo shots. The company has always fixated on a more rustic lifestyle, and never before has it been based in a prominent city until the new 2021 series. In addition, in our series, we left out Pupcake because we didn't have a figurine of him that was to scale with the 6-inch dolls at the time, so it had a Strawberry and Custard Against the World vibe. In Barry in the Big City, Pupcake has also been excluded. Or rather, he's been reassigned to Orange Blossom and turned orange according to the new website. I could have sworn that was marmalade at first. Of course, we are not flat out saying that Wild Brain per se stole our idea for this series, as it's not like we own the brand or anything. A pupcake. Once Barry in the Big City progresses past the initial concept that bears similarities to ours, it goes a fairly different direction than what we had envisioned for our series, as you'll see when I begin reviewing the double episode pilot. Believe me when I say we're not trying to make a big spectacle out of this, 
but it does go to show that companies are, at times, attentive to what their fans are saying and putting out. Let's say this is all coincidental, and it may be. My question is, if the company hasn't seen our series, what encouraged it to go such a drastically different direction than the 2017 series? It's probable that Wild Brain wanted to base Barry in the Big City on the comic books, but the comics weren't exclusively based in Big Apple City. Maybe they just wanted to start fresh? On a side note, notice how in this Strawberry Through the Years infographic that they neglected to include the 2017 design. Now, when you look at the character designs for Barry in the Big City, you'll immediately notice that Wild Brain repurposed the 2017 designs but made a few adjustments. Strawberry's plain white dress has been spiced up with a denim jacket and a strawberry-shaped purse, for example. And thankfully, she no longer resembles a Smurf. <laughs> you'll see that they meshed the designs with the 2002 series, which is evidenced by the characters having a diverse set of pets again. You can also see that the characters now have a more diverse set of face shapes and body types, which Wild Brain implemented for the sake of diversity. The Strawberry characters have always had a problem with same face syndrome, so this is a refreshing change. Fans have mixed feelings about this new series, we do as well, even despite the drastic improvements since the failed 2017 initiative. Some say the animation looks stiff, Others argue that the designs still look awful. However, there is a noticeable increase in the number of people who are in favor of this series, as opposed to the 2017 iteration. I must say that Wild Brain's willingness to rework the entire series to appease its fans is commendable. They took a negative situation and turned it into a positive. We have to give them credit for that, even if we're not crazy about this new series. With that being said, we tuned in to the first few episodes of Barry in the Big City to see what it's all about. The pilot immediately jumps into Strawberry leaving Berry Bitty City, I mean Berryville, for Big Apple City. I'm assuming her hometown underwent a name change because Strawberry and her friends aren't miniature anymore? There's very little backstory as to why she's leaving her hometown, apart from her wanting to become the next big name in baking. Strawberry then moves in with her Aunt Praline, who is a new adult character. In fact, adults are commonplace in this series, which is a first in Strawberry Shortcake history. Also, in the third episode, Strawberry mentions having a grandmother, which is another new fact. My Cranberry Jam says every problem has a solution. So does she have parents in this universe? Plus, there isn't a token male anymore. There's several guys, actually, including Bread Pudding, another new character who's uppity and, evidently, a developing antagonist to the other characters. Some fans speculate that he'll be Plum Pudding's brother. Furthermore, Strawberry actually gets a taste of the quote-unquote real world for the first time. The other characters perceive her hyper-positive attitude as a corny nuisance in this show, whereas beforehand she was pretty much a parental figure to her friends, to the point that they relied on her for all of their problems and seldom thought for themselves. I will say that we like this change, as well as Strawberry having a somewhat broader range of emotion, although she's still overly enthusiastic. I like the little details they sprinkle in, such as the rat with the pizza when Strawberry exits the bus, and the roach crawling on her food truck. I guess they're trying to say that Big Apple City is a lot like New York City, despite being its sweeter fictional counterpart. Also, Pie Man is back, and he's a celebrity chef now. Okay. It's not long before we meet, or rather re-meet, Strawberry's friends after her encounter with Bread Pudding. Lemon Meringue has always been a beauty guru, right? Here, she's been fused with Ginger Snap and is a tomboyish engineer who hates the color pink. And pink. Pink? Oh, come on! I think it would have been cool if she remained a girly girl who just so happened to also be an engineer, just to prove that everything isn't always so black and white. Lime Chiffon is, I'm assuming, the token Brainiac. She's never been a major character, so I care little about any changes that have been made to her. Orange, even though we don't learn much about her in the pilot, is likely still a daredevil, like in Berry Bitty Adventures, and Blueberry, who seems to have been fused with Cherry Jam or perhaps Tea Blossom, is the token eccentric friend who's into good vibes and positive energy. I'm not crazy about any of the characters, if I'm being honest, and quite frankly, it's tiring when Strawberry has to meet her same set of friends over and over and over again every time the franchise gets renewed. 
The group will go on to run food trucks, which is what I meant about this series taking a different route than our series beyond the initial concept. I don't want to spoil what else we had planned for Life's a Shortcake, but we cooked up an interesting plotline. He didn't appear in the pilot or the third episode, but the trailer and intro show what I believe to be Huckleberry Pie. I can't tell if it's him because, like Pupcake, he's been altered beyond recognition, but I'm certain that's a result of Wild Brain's effort to make the series more diverse. Judging by some of the sneak peeks, however, New Huck will apparently be a musician? Has he also been fused with Cherry Jam? Check your dictionary, look up sweet and merry berry. Maybe I should call him Huckleberry Jam. And I don't know, judging by this shot, he and Strawberry are sitting mighty close to one another. Just look at the way she's looking at him. Will the series make history again by including romance for the first time? Thus far, Barry in the Big City feels… odd? Foreign? I can't think of the proper word to describe it. We're just not feeling it even after watching multiple episodes and the additional snippets. We don't hate the show, but we don't love it either. But you know, that's okay. I'd like to see that slight mystical element that the previous Strawberry Shortcake eras had. No, I don't want Strawberry to have powers again, <laughs> but Berry Vidi Adventures had so much untapped potential. The showrunners never explained why the characters were Biddy in the first place. That could have been an excellent plot point, as well as the fact that there were so few humans in the Biddy world. The series fell short in terms of greatness because of its lack of depth, in my opinion, and I wish it had taken a similar route as the movie Sky's the Limit. When I tell you we watched that movie every day for months in 2009. Hi, Future Strawberry here. According to Wild Brain site, Strawberry will acquire a lucky spoon, which must be the mystical element we refer to that's common in SSC series. The spoon first appears in episode 4 and is said to be passed down from generation to generation in Strawberry's family, but it requires mastering. Yep, there it is. The spoon itself doesn't seem very magical. It looks more like it changes its user's mindset because they think it's magical and thus makes them better bakers. But I digress. The producers weren't joking when they said they'd amp up the comedy in the series. <laughs> I like comedy in moderation, but not when it's overdone. I'd love to get that feel-good, nostalgic feeling again that Strawberry Shortcake series were always known for. And so far, it's absent in this series. It just feels like something's missing. There's still another 37 episodes or so to go of Barry in the Big City, so there's still time for it to grow on us. It's already been greenlit for a second season and a couple of 44-minute CGI specials, so maybe we'll have a change of heart. We may consider making another review video once the first season is over, or perhaps even midway through season one, so if you'd be interested in seeing that, be sure to let us know in the comment section. If we were in charge of a new Strawberry Shortcake reboot, we would make a continuation of the Berry Bitty Adventures era, except Strawberry and her friends are older, have in-depth backstories and character arcs, and experience more complex problems that affect the world around them. You know, kind of like Sky's the Limit, but a step further. <laughs> I get the feeling that we'll be questioned as to why we prefer the Berry Bitty Adventures era over the 2002 to 2007 era, so let me explain. Obviously, the 2002 era is, in many ways, superior to Berry Bitty Adventures. However, when we became Strawberry Shortcake fans, it was at the latter end of the 2002 era. So since we joined the fandom late into the game, there was only a year or so left of the 2002 era and then Strawberry transitioned into Berry Bitty Adventures. Since we were there from beginning to end with Berry Bitty Adventures, it has a special place in our heart. But don't get me wrong, the 2002 to 2007 series is a very, very close second for us. I think that Strawberry Shortcake series always fall flat because the company keeps aiming for that three to six year old age demographic so that fans of the original series can bond with their children over the new series. The original 80s fans would be in their 40s by now so their children may be nearing adulthood at this point. So does that mean that the 2021 era aims to appeal to children of the 2002 series fans? Gosh, has it really been that long? 
I guess that would explain the heavy influence the 2002 series has on Barry in the Big City. Might make us feel like dinosaurs, Wild Brain. However, I will note that this series isn't as simplified or babied down as previous Strawberry series, despite having the same demographic, which is a welcome change. On a side note, a new toy line will be released in 2022, so I'm curious to see what they put out. Unsurprisingly, Strawberry has switched toy companies again, and this go-round, she's partnered with Moose Toys. If we were to start producing videos with these new toys, we'd have to retrain our voice to match the new characters. All I can say is... Strawberry's gonna hurt her little baby throat. There will also be a new Roblox game based on the series. We've never played Roblox, but who knows? Maybe we can play the new game for a video or something. That's pretty much it for our deep dive video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and feel free to give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comment section. But before I go, I know a lot of our supporters have been questioning where in the Berry Bitty world we have been, so if you care to hear about that, be sure to stick around. Basically, we posted a vlog in 2019 and then vanished. At that point, we had already been on YouTube for roughly 10 years, and we felt that our time for mild relevance was over, as it's natural for channels to gradually lose popularity. The Strawberry Shortcake franchise was dying as well, so there was nothing to discuss about it, and on top of that, the world became very chaotic. It still is chaotic. I had actually announced in our last vlog that we'd be stepping away from YouTube for a while. There isn't as much traffic on our channel and we've just decided to take that time to explore our other interests. So we're kind of lost as to where to take this channel at this point. So lately we've been interested in working on projects that are separate from Strawberry Shortcake. You know, sometimes you just want to try something new. We kind of want to explore like creating something that's completely 100% our own and not something that's owned by another company. We're not really sure when our next upload will be because our videos aren't doing as well anymore, so I kind of understand that to be like people aren't really as interested anymore. Perhaps most viewers didn't reach that point of the video, or perhaps I didn't communicate it clearly enough, but we had no foreseeable plans of returning. However, we didn't want to announce that we had quit in case something like this reboot came up and we felt compelled to start creating content again. As you may be aware, YouTube implemented the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, better known as COPA, in early 2020. Under it, channels that YouTube regards as made for kids are essentially punished by having their videos demonetized, their comments disabled, and no option for adding videos to playlists, playing them in the mini player, or sharing them. A ton of toy channels have quit after this change, and our channel has been impacted too, even though it wasn't performing well even prior to Copa. Copa was just the icing on the cake. Some creators have found ways to combat it, and we are looking into those options at the moment. Truth be told, I don't see us continuing with this channel forever. I just don't foresee us putting out a video in 2028 being like, hey guys, let's dive into this new Strawberry Shortcake series! Also, we just celebrated our 18th YouTube anniversary. We've been brainstorming where to take our content next, which is difficult to navigate because we don't want to alienate our viewers, you know? We don't want to make Strawberry Shortcake videos one day and then rebrand as a channel about lawnmowers. We may experiment with different styles of videos, but goodness knows they'll probably still be SSC themed in the end. I don't know. There's a lot to think about. With that being said, I don't know how much longer we'll be on YouTube, but we're willing to give it one last shot. If you desire to see more content from us, a big factor in our continuation is your support. That means watching our videos all the way through, giving them a thumbs up, leaving comments, subscribing, and sharing. If our content continues to trend in the opposite direction, we'll assume there isn't a demand for it anymore. If you made it to the end of this video, be sure to comment Shortcake Forever so we know who our loyal viewers are. You guys are the best. We had so much fun putting this video together, even though it took forever, and who knows, maybe we'll see each other again soon. Alright guys, thanks for watching!